Welcome, everybody, to today's episode of Jersey Baseball Show. We are going full out in North Jersey here. We're up in Milburn talking to two of the uh, stars of the, the Millers, um, keeping the great tradition up there alive. We've got Robert Schneider, we've got Steve Echevarria, um, and two of the top juniors in the state, as well as stars of the, uh, the Milburn team currently uh, doing their usual um, one of the top squads in North Jersey in, in, in group three, certainly state championship contenders. Thanks for taking some time, guys, and welcome. Thank you. So we had Shay, Grady, and Matt Chapman on a little while ago, and, and you guys have sort of followed the same path as them as far as growing up together and playing ball. And, uh, you know, give us the, the lowdown of uh, – you know, little league days play until now, and how how it's pretty cool to you know Stephen be on the mound, and and you've got Robert at short, and kind of always have. Yeah, so I mean, so eighth grade or not eighth grade? Yeah, uh, when we were eight years old, I guess we were like we were playing against each other in little league on like our own chains. I was on the Sparrows chain, Robert's on the Eagles chain, and we'd play against each other through the spring, and then once summer came around, we would um that we'd be on like the Milburn all-star team basically. And it'd be like everyone, like a, like a conjoined team from all the chains. And we'd play against like teams like Cranford, um, like Mount Olive, just like teams all around. And um, yeah, it was basically like that for <laughs> till now, basically. And it's always great to have Robert behind me, especially with that chemistry since we were eight years old. It's pretty amazing. So, Robert, you guys were taught at a young age that uh, the Cranford was your big rival, right? Is that, uh, is that what yeah, we're saying? Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, ever since eight years old. I mean, as Stephen said, eight through 13, we were uh, Little League and All-Star teams. And Cranford was definitely the big rival in the summer, still as last year in high school um, and still is. But they're good guys over there. And playing with Stephen since eight years old, like he said, the chemistry and just like, I know he has my back uh, when he's on the field and I got his, and that's just really cool. But, yeah, and I was going to say, you're, you're, you guys are biggest rivals because of uh, what you, you know, not the same conference, but what you guys do in the postseason usually. But I've never seen like a, a rivalry that is like that intense on the field, but you guys are that, you know, well connected off of it. Is there any sort of weird vibe that way? Or is it just like kind of that's, you know, you guys are, so close geographically that's kind of how it's been you guys have become friends through the years um rob you want to go i i i go okay so, yeah. um, i mean we play together in the summer with wadica so in the club so the summer summer we're good friends i'd say we're best friends in the summer maybe more like acquaintances in the, in the spring um we'll give each other like some good luck texts maybe here or there but when uh when it comes late, late June, I mean, not a lot of text, but they're great guys over there. It's fun to play against them. They're great players. It's fun to compete. But um, no, nah, it's not really weird. It's just they're great guys. It's fun to compete, and we'll give it our all against them always. You guys have come into a school with, with obviously a great tradition, state champs in 2015, you know, 2017 again. Um, you know, Pete Ceruto being one of the guys from that team, you know, tradition is, is obviously big. I mean, is that kind of put on you guys, you know, the, the program, the way that the, you know, that it runs at a, you know, what, as soon as, I mean, when you step foot in ninth grade or even before that? Probably even before that, I feel like, I mean, considering when I was in eighth grade, I guess I would, I was playing against, um, Matt Chapman on, I think, what was, yeah, 13 U. I played against Matt Chapman, and Coach Chapman would watch his son play, and he would obviously see the kids that are coming into high school in the eighth grade. And so I guess it would kind of give him, it gave him like a good, I guess, look at me. So then once I got into ninth grade, he, you know, like right from the start, just introduced himself, all that stuff. And I mean, it all, it all leads back to Chap. I mean, he's a great guy, honestly. I mean, during school, I'll always try and go to his room, 141. Robert can vouch for that. I mean, he's just, 
all around. It's just like, it's fun to be around him. And it's, he's probably like the main reason why the tradition is so like great around in Milburn. Yeah. So, so Steven kind of read my mind and answered one of my questions was, uh, you know, what's it like playing for, for coach Chapman? Obviously his reputation is uh, statewide and deserved, but, but what's it like kind of on the inside playing for him? Yeah. I mean, there are so many words to describe Coach Chapman. I mean, it's like almost having like your best friend coach a team. I, he makes you feel comfortable if you're slumping. Like he'll give you words of advice to, you know, break you out. And he's he comes to practice every day with the energy and like the mindset to win. Um, he never puts like like you said before, Milburn in the past has always won. Um, it's a really good winning culture, but there's never that like expectation that he has like oh we got to win this we got to win that he just comes every day and tells us like just compete like work together be great together and just compete as a team from there Stephen I mean you're you've obviously got the the bigger reputation um in that you know University of Oregon verbal commit and congratulations <laughs> on that um how does that kind of, you know, tell us how that kind of blew up from, you know, kind of a ninth grader doing his thing at, at, at high school. Obviously, you, you've got a good reputation, but, you know, where does it go from there to sort of this this national level? Because, you know, that's that's pretty far away from Milburn. Yeah. I mean, it's from ninth grade to 10th grade. I mean, that whole little jump was kind of like crazy because going into eighth grade, you know, I was only throwing like like low 80s and I mean I mean that's still pretty good and then I guess in the summer I jumped like to 88 and then all the coaches saw so it all happened like really really fast like within probably even months because I guess with COVID and stuff so we didn't really have a real season we had sorry um we didn't really have a real season so it was kind of like I didn't really play that much and then the summer came last dance tournament, everything. And it just all, it was all very fast with the whole Oregon, you know, just getting my name out there and like the reputation. You knew he had it in him, Robert? I knew he had it in him whole time. Yeah. Since when did you, uh, I mean, he always, Rob, did he always throw hard, uh, you know, as, as a, as a youngster? Was he, uh, yeah. You know, he was, like, he, uh, yeah. He was a center fielder though, growing up. He, he, Showed it off from the outfield a little more than the mound, but yeah, he's he's always had a good arm. Yeah, it's a it's a good point because I mean, even still, Steve, you you get to hit, you hit well, you hit, you know, not quite well enough maybe to hit in the Pac-12, but but still pretty pretty darn good. When did it really go from, uh, you know, an outfielder who pitches to now I'm really kind of known as a pitcher who can also play in the outfield. Yeah, I mean, growing up, I, I mean, I pitched yes, but I wasn't like anything special at all. Right, kind of all over the place. Like I could throw it hard, definitely, but like it was going all over the place. Like it was like it was there was no like real like <laughs> or accuracy. I was mainly outfield, and I could, you know, hit. And I guess, again, I guess from eighth grade to the tenth grade, like there was like two years. It was kind of just like, like. I guess puberty and everything, you know, growing up and the arm was getting, you know, as I got older, the velocity kept going higher. So it was like, once I saw that I could really whip it, I kind of focused more on pitching than I did with hitting and all that fielding stuff. So, but I do still hit. So, I mean, it's still fun. Like this year, I'm going to play a little bit more first base than I am outfield. How good a fielder is Rob? Tell me about him, you know, how you feel as a pitcher when he's, uh, you know, knowing that you got guys like him in the infield. Yeah, I, you know, Robert's really overrated. He's nothing good. He's <laughs> – no, Robert, no, Robert's good. He's he's really good. I mean, every ground ball that's hit towards his way, you know, I'm pretty confident that he'll field it and make a good throw to first base and just get the out. I mean, I don't even have to look at it sometimes just to – just to know that he's going to get the, get the out for me is pretty like great. I have full confidence in him. Yeah. I mean, I know you, you play with guys all over the country. 
but is it something special to, you know, a, a position like that where, you know, you don't really even have to communicate anymore. You guys have played together for so long. Yeah, no, you can't. That doesn't just like come up out of nowhere, you know, even if you know someone for like a couple months, even a year, it's not like, it's not for like an eight year relationship. Like I've known the kids for so long. It's just, it's like a brotherhood. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's the, it's the really cool part. I mean, travel ball is what it is, but the cool thing about high school is when you get something like that and, and you guys have played together for so long. Yeah. Rob, you're saying that, that Steve really isn't even that great of a pitcher compared to like hitting is what we're saying. Yeah, is like, he's never yeah. a pitcher. Um, but no, he, he can, he can definitely throw it. I mean, when I'm at short and he's not doing himself and striking guys out, like, seeing his fastball move six inches across the plate at 92 is it's absurd and then throw a slider at 82 and whatever. I mean, he's awesome. And he's came from such a long way. And it's really cool just to see like as his teammate and as he's one of his really good friends, like how far he's come and how great he's been. I was going to say, I know you're obviously a huge baseball fan on top of being a, a great player. Do you ever, and maybe we don't want to admit it, kind of get lost in the moment watching him pitch and watching some of the stuff that he can do and like almost for like a split second kind of forgetting what you're supposed to be doing you know kind of catch yourself watching sometimes yeah I mean I don't know if I should admit this on video like I don't know if coach Chapman really wants to hear this but sometimes like you see Steven like you see the catcher give a one it's like I'm, I don't even need to prep stuff like this this ball's going in the glove and this guy is not touching it yeah no, we we that that was all off the record. None of that. We, we, none of that was for for action. No, I'm, Stephen, got a question for you because you posted something recently that got me jealous, and I think it's time we bring it up. Um, you posted something recently about getting a, a, an NIL deal with Milburn Deli, and I don't even the rest of this stuff just doesn't really matter. That, that place is pretty cool. Tell me about it. Tell me about, uh, here's your chance to, to get some free advertising in. Um, how do we take advantage of this? And Milburn Deli, for those people who don't know, I mean, I was why it was funny because, because Pete Ceruto is the one who told me about it first. And like a day after we talked, I'm watching the food network and all of a sudden they're like showing the gobbler from Milburn Deli. I'm like, this is pretty legit. So here's your chance. Hype them up. Go ahead. Yeah, so the Milburn Deli, it's a legit spot. Um, it's not your ordinary deli. You know, they have, I think I'd say they're pretty famous. I think the actor Anne Hathaway, she actually grew up in Milburn. She actually gave Milburn Deli like a shout out once. Like the food's legit. I'd say it's one of the best delis in New Jersey, if not in the world. Um, my personal favorite, I got to say, is The Godfather. Um, it's a chicken cutlet with bacon i think mozzarella cheese and russian dressing like um like pressed down you know it doesn't sound like overwhelming but it's it's a 10 out of 10 sandwich and i think one of my buddies on milburn who likes to get the godfather buff would absolutely agree he loves that sandwich man rob of all the stuff that steve's done and has got coming to him is this what we're most jealous of yeah uh like you said, I'm not jealous of the 90s or whatever that is. The Milburn Deli is, if you live around here, you know the Milburn Deli. A lot of out-of-towners come here, and it is a good place, and that's awesome that Steve got that opportunity because that is, that is a famous spot. Yes, sir. Tell us about, uh, tell us about Oregon, though, because, you know, for, for, for most of us, we know great program. We know Nike. And, and, you know, we know a lot of the kind of crazy color combos that they got in their uniforms. Um, when was the first time you went out there and what were your thoughts? So first time I went out there was actually like this October. It was, I don't know, like a mid October or something. Cause when I first committed, I had to do like a virtual tour and stuff cause of the like, whole COVID thing. Um, but yeah, when I first visited, it was like a crazy experience. I mean, it's obviously on the other side of the country. The state of Oregon is like pretty beautiful, like the nature and everything. But the college, like the 
itself was pretty amazing. I went to a Friday night football game, saw them play. I think Cal Berkeley and pretty, yeah, they won um, that in that stadium and the whole experience was pretty insane. I'm not going to lie. And then we, um, then we did like a whole like photo shoot, the whole, like all that stuff. It took us a tour of the school, saw the, uh, the, the field, we got to go on the football stadiums, all the facilities. I mean, the facilities are pretty out of control. It's crazy how much Nike helps with Oregon and all that stuff and how much they get from uh, the Nike. But yeah. You burn all your Adidas stuff yet? No, not yet. I still got two more years with the Adidas. And once I go down there, it's, I think I might get some hate if I rock it forbidden i think you get kicked out right is that you can get through the school or something like that rob you hit him up for any nike gear yet i will i'll definitely hit him up for some nike and some free sandwiches at the dallas both those <laughs> excellent goals for this year rob um yeah you know, you've got your own recruiting journey you know it's going to pay off i would think sometime soon you know certainly uh as, as schools more and more schools see what you do in the field and and, and see the offensive game um but team wise state title is that the goal what are we sectional title i mean what do we what what are we focused on every day yeah um you know at milburn it's a lot it's a lot of winning culture like that's kind of the mindset so i'm not going to say it's not a state championship so i think for most teams and like in the past it's always a goal but we're just trying to i mean we're trying to compete every day and we had a good year last year. We won the county. We won the section. Lost in the state semis, but that was a good year, and we're trying to build off that. We have 14 guys back this year. Um, we got a lot of our arms back. Uh, we got Steven. So, I mean, we got a lot of guys back, and, yeah, we're going to keep doing our best and try and make a deep run in the state tournament, definitely. See if you pattern yourself at after any pitcher, you know, anybody you really like to watch as a pitcher, or, or if not, who's your favorite player? Um, well, I'd like to say Jacob deGrom solely because I think everyone would say he's the best pitcher, but I think like watching him pitch is something special because his stuff is absolutely gross. Like he's He's one of those guys that, like, if you're on the Mets, you're just thinking, like, yeah, I'm glad he's on my side because he's just he's just gross in my opinion. I That's think. somebody you just watch, even if you're on the field, right? It, but um, it's, you can't. I don't think I don't think it's possible to pattern your game after somebody who throws like that. So yeah, it's it's hard to. He's he's something else. Yeah. Um, bro, I see a Villanova picture in the background there. Yes. Uh, Tell me what we got going on because uh, we're huge Jay Wright fans. Yeah, great coach, best coach in college basketball. Uh, both my parents went there, so big, uh, big Nova household here. Absolutely, absolutely. So Villanova is the Milburn of college basketball, or Milburn is the Villanova of North Jersey baseball. What are we? What are we saying? Um. I don't know. That's a tough one. I, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of similarities there though. Like just like the attitude, um, the attitude and the culture there, like it's a great coaching staff, obviously at Villanova, they win a lot. They win all the time, two national yeah. championships. Um, and Milburn, I mean, in the past they won, I think in 2015, 2017, they have two state, we have two state championships, great coaching staff, obviously with coach Chapman and players that just want to keep getting better. So there are a lot of similarities there. Definitely. Steve, game day routine. Is there uh you a big music on game day, you know, on, on bump day, I should say. Um, are you uh leave me alone, don't talk to me? What are, what's our uh mound day routine? Um well, I mean, I don't really have like any special routine, I'd say. I just kind of try and like not overthink everything and get too like antsy and stuff because that's when I start throwing like my worst and I get all like jittery and stuff. It's just, I like to be laid back almost like it's just a regular day when I'm not pitching, but yeah, that's basically it. And honestly, like a pregame meal, a godfather from the Milburn Deli would be <laughs> something else. I got to say it is, it's a 10 out of 10 spot. 
now I now I'm starting to see why they they wanted you to yeah it's make it it all makes sense now. Um, Rob, what's one thing about Steve we don't know? Um, all right, I got one. Steven is one kid. This kid loses his AirPods. I think every other day. It's, it's that's settled down. That's settled it's down. Crazy. I mean, I get a text from him like twice a week, like. Robert, did I leave my AirPods in your car? Like, can you please check? Like, he loses them more than anyone I know. It's crazy. All right, to help my situation, I, it happened once. I left him in his car. <laughs> and it happened two days ago because I thought I left it in his car, but I happened to leave them in the locker room. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you a chance to return the favor now, Steve. So I'd probably go with his his great eating uh, palate. I'd say he loves, he, you know, you can see his face too. He knows that he loves his chicken fingers and his pasta and his hot dogs without the bun. Those are the three things I know that he eats, and those are the three things that he only eats. So, um, I'm starting. I mean, we, we can say all we want about where you're going to school. I'm starting to see why Milburn Deli went to you. Yeah. You know, you know Robert, Robert goes to Milburn Deli and gets like a ham and cheese sandwich. It's like a little, it's a little <laughs> embarrassing. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Asking for hot dogs without buns at Milburn Deli. Yeah. I mean, one thing, Rob, that, that you'll remember most about playing at Milburn. Uh, I got to go with last year. I mean, last year we didn't play freshman year. So, I mean, the last dance was awesome, but that was in a full high school season. But last year being my first real year of varsity baseball to win counties as a younger team on a walk-off and then to win the section one nothing in crazy game with 2,000 people. I think that right now has got to be my best Melbourne memory baseball steve one game i gotta get up to this year before the end of the year one regular season game if you could pick one melbourne c and all prep usually goes those games are usually pretty good um hmm. i mean it's hard to like i mean if when or if we go to the gnt finals again if we have to play c and all i'd say if you don't go to that game you must be crazy that's gonna be a that's gonna be a great one yeah, yeah. that that would probably that's be a good one to go with for sure 100 percent. yeah um guys thank you so much for taking some time here i know it's a it's a crazy schedule and, and and crazy this time of year we're just getting started with uh with junior year um so good luck the rest of the year right we hope hopefully give me a gnt final to get to Hopefully it's against Seton Hall. Yeah, I hear they're pretty good too. And uh, appreciate you coming on today. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Our guest today, Rob Schneider, the outstanding shortstop at Milburn High School. Stephen Echevarria, the outstanding pitcher, University of Oregon verbal commit, chief spokesman for Milburn Deli. I think we got all the important stuff in there. That's our show today. We look forward to seeing you guys out at the field and uh, hopefully we'll catch you next time.